Procrastination is bad. It often puts us artists in this terrible position where we have effectively dodged something stressful only to create a more dangerous, more stressful version of that thing in the future. We are condemning our future selves to a worse version of the present. Knowing it is unhealthy doesn't seem enough to stop it though, so let's take a look at procrastination today. What it is, why we do it, and how to hopefully stop the beast. My name is Zach, I'm an artist and an art teacher, and if you enjoy content like this, please consider subscribing. What is procrastination? It is the act of delaying or putting off tasks, often until the last minute. We likely know this from school, where we are frequently assigned projects and papers with two weeks of work time, only to panic at 11 o'clock the night before it's due. I dare say most of us have done this at one point or another. After school, though, this takes a different form. For artists, we often put off practice. We put off engaging in the things that we need to in order to improve. We put off figural studies, we put off hands, and we always draw our characters with their arms terminating in their pockets. As adults, procrastinating can be the eternal pushing off of getting back into art. The vacant glance you toss towards your paints, toward your sketchbook, as their souls slowly die in the corner. So why do we do it? We know it's wrong. Chances are you've seen a dozen videos like this or you've heard people talk in your life about how terrible procrastination is. We've all experienced it, or at least most of us normal folk have, and often people that tout themselves as perfectionists found themselves procrastinating once upon a time and went, that's a terrible feeling. I don't want to do that again. So why do we do it? Well, sometimes for artists, being the different breed that we are, we wait for motivation or inspiration. Something ethereal we think will knock upon our door or wake us up in the middle of the night and give us this brilliant idea, this thing to work from. It's easy as an artist to wait for the muse to strike, to wait for something divine to touch us and to spur us into action. The reality is that's just not how most of reality works though. Waiting for motivation or inspiration can be ineffective in the long term if your goal is to get back into your artwork or to work on improving a skill of any kind. Sometimes we're just afraid to start. Artwork can often be very stressful to dive back into. It's easy to look at that sketchbook that sits on your desk or on your nightstand and get very excited, but when you open it, you start leafing through all the pages and you realize, oh my goodness, I did these amazing drawings six months ago, and now I'm positive there's no way I could do that. And you know what? You might be right, but you're only right for a small amount of time. In fact, the evidence that you're capable of making those good drawings is staring you right in the face. But we can be afraid to start because of reasons like that. We're going to be afraid to start because we've taken a long time away. We know that our work is not going to be as high a quality as it once was. Sometimes we can be afraid to start because it's something new. We can be afraid to dive into a new medium to try ink for the first time or digital art for the first time. In fact, fear is one of the things that prevents us as human beings from engaging in most things that are new to us. It's very natural and it's also incredibly detrimental. Sometimes we procrastinate because there are several tasks that we need to complete in order to actually start the thing that we want to start. Perhaps you have to do some research first. I can often trick myself into thinking, I can't work on this drawing today or this painting because I need to prep things. I need to do some research. I need to, I need to figure out how birds' wings function before I can possibly paint another bird. Not thinking about the fact that I painted a dozen or two dozen of them in the last couple years and it's obviously worked out just fine. Perhaps you need to buy or find supplies and you don't take care of that and so you sit there and look at your colored pencils and go, ugh, but my black and my white are almost out and I need to replace them. Sometimes, when you finally sit down to do the work, there are unhelpful steps in the way. Things that past you needed to take care of and present you can now put off the work and procrastinate again. Sometimes we procrastinate because we're overwhelmed, and this is fairly reasonable. There's a lot to be overwhelmed with in the art world. It's so easy to jump on Instagram or YouTube and see these amazing artists and the work that they produce and then naturally you compare yourself or you, even if you don't compare yourself, you look at all of the things that they can do and you go, I want those skills but there's 72 of them and it's just going to take me too long, it's too many things to think about and I'm just, I'm gonna go play this video game instead, I'm gonna go read a book instead, I'm gonna go do something that maybe is productive but is not my art. 
it's very, very easy to get overwhelmed, especially with the ability now to see all of these amazing people accomplishing things because we don't necessarily understand how many hours or days or years they put into it to get to that point. And even if we did know, that might just add to our feeling of being overwhelmed. Sometimes we procrastinate because of distractions. And sometimes distractions are good. They're not necessarily bad things. I can procrastinate on working on my artwork because my daughter's in the other room and I'd rather spend time with her. Well, that is time and energy I'm probably not going to regret spending. It does keep me from working on my artwork. Sometimes you might have a roommate or some siblings or a spouse that distract you from things. If that's the situation you find yourself in, you have to prioritize things and figure out what times of day work best for what things. But some distractions are more nefarious. Sometimes you're distracted by fiddling on your phone. You might be distracted by Instagram or by YouTube or by a video game. And these things aren't bad in and of themselves, but they're designed to be time sinks. They're designed to be things that pull us away from more productive things. Distractions can be good and they can also be quite nefarious. Sometimes we procrastinate because we lack a priority structure. This is not necessarily a lack of priorities or priorities being in the wrong order. This is simply not having a well thought through way to manage your priorities. We all have things that happen in our lives that have to happen, but if they are unorganized, it's easy to let other things fall by the wayside. This has been me for a long time in my life where I have never stepped away from art in any real measurable way. It's just become something that fell down my priority list. When I was teaching full-time, it was easy to find satisfaction in what I was doing day-to-day -day with my students. When it came to summer, I was relaxing slash detoxing from the school year, and I didn't take that time and dive into my art. Now, the other part of that is that if I took nine months off from really working on my art and then got to the three months of summer, my skills had stagnated to such a point that it was frustrating for weeks and weeks and weeks. And that made it much more difficult for me to actually invest time into my artwork. So having a good list of priorities and, and also having them arranged within that list is going to be something that's going to help you avoid procrastination from that angle. Sometimes we can procrastinate because we assume we have to be in a particular mindset in order to work. This might harken back to motivation and inspiration, but I also think it's different. It's easy to trick ourselves into thinking we have to have an artistic mindset, be in a creative mood to sit down and draw or paint or work on anything creative. And this is just simply not the case. If you think about any professional in a field, even professionals who love their job, they don't feel like doing that thing every single time they sit down. As artists, if our goal is to improve, to pave the way for better days, then even when we have a crappy day or we don't feel like drawing, it can sometimes be beneficial to push through that. Now, you don't wanna be a self-abuser and push yourself to do things that are really terrible for you in that moment if you had an atrocious day. But that's not really what I'm talking about. What I'm kind of mentioning is the fact that we can think that there's a specific mindset that we have to wait for in the same way that we'd wait for inspiration or motivation to strike like lightning. And that's not the case. You can take that bandwidth that you think is the ideal mindset and vastly, vastly expand it. And even when you've had a bad day, sometimes art can be a good thing to get you through that. So these are some of the reasons why you, I, artists in general might procrastinate. So how do we fight it? We know it's a bad thing. I don't know any artists that are content with their procrastination. Most of them, if they were given a simple drug that would allow them to remove it from their existence, would do so in a heartbeat. How do we fight it? I think it's important to start off by being aware of your tendencies and be honest with yourself. It's not a sin to procrastinate. Yes, it's a bad thing, but that doesn't make you a bad person. This is a component of who you are that prevents you from achieving something that you desire. So know yourself and know what you tend to do. When you truly understand your own tendencies, you can start to lay the groundwork to counter them. This is, I think, the first thing you have to do. If you don't know that you're a procrastinator, if you're not honest with yourself about that component of you, then you're gonna really struggle to do anything to fight it. Understand motivation and inspiration. These two came up at the forefront of reasons for procrastination. So you have to understand. These are drugs. They can help you achieve something in the short term, but they are unreliable. The withdrawals are terrible and they're an unhealthy thing to rely on for the long term. They are fickle. Use them when they strike you, but don't wait for them. 
Sometimes it works and truly it might work often, but depending on these two can also be like waiting for rain in a desert. Instead, create motivation for yourself by creating goals that you can slowly work toward. Create accountability for yourself. If it's not linked to work or school, then create a schedule and create a sheet with little boxes you can check off when you hit five days in a row of drawing. This isn't for everyone, but I love having lists and check boxes that I can mark off. It's a sense of accomplishment when you do so. If this is important to you, search for ways to motivate yourself. As for inspiration, I think it's even less reliable. You cannot only make art when you are inspired, if you want to make art frequently or make art as an occupation. You will have to find other ways to cultivate inspiration or substitute. Many of the same strategies that work for motivation work here as well, but I would also like to add, setting scheduled times to work so it's just part of your day can be a wonderful thing. We as humans like schedules. Now, many of you hearing this might say, I don't like schedules, but we do in a lot of ways and in a lot of ways that we don't necessarily understand as schedule. We like to wake up around the same time. We like to have meals around the same time. We like to see the same people when we see them, assuming they're pleasurable people to see. So setting scheduled times for your artwork can allow it to actually happen. And when it becomes a part of your schedule, when it becomes a part of the things you do, then all of a sudden you don't have to wait for any particular state of mind for inspiration, for motivation, or anything else. Once you get used to going to work, going to school, going for your walk, exercising, you don't think about it as much. It just kind of happens. So if your art, if your creative work is something that you really desire to make a part of your daily life, your weekly life, then schedule it. Make it a part of your routine. Set tiny little goals if you struggle waiting for inspiration. Again, this is going back to the checkboxes. I track most of what I do, and it makes me feel good when I can go into a video I'm working on or an art piece that I'm working on and X off, yay, I have the research for this one done. I have the editing for this done. I have the recording for this done. I have the planning for this done. Those are little stages of the work along the way, and it makes me feel good. I feel better. My whiteboard is splattered all over the entire thing with little things that I can check off on and get done. It helps me keep track of what I need to do. It helps me feel better at the end of the day with what I have done. When you're inspired, write and doodle quickly so you can capture the dragon's fire for the 99% of the time you're not going to feel inspired. So inspiration does come, motivation is going to hit you, and you have to utilize them when they're there, but don't rely upon them. I don't think it's fair to talk about them being totally useless because there's no, they're, they're just not. You're going to have moments where inspiration strikes you. You're going to have moments where you're very, very motivated and use those. But if the groundwork is laid where you don't need them, when they evaporate inevitably, because they will, you aren't left with nothing. You are left with structure, and you're left with, hopefully, a piece of gold that you stole from the leprechaun. If you are simply afraid to start or don't know how, break it down into smaller tasks. Take a look at everything that needs to happen and create a list and then immediately start working through it. I throw immediately on here for a reason. I can often trick myself into thinking I've accomplished something by creating effective lists. In truth, a list is nothing without the action that follows it. So it's important once you create a list to give yourself time frames to start working through the things. I say immediately here because I think if you have the capacity to immediately start working through things on your list, not only will that be effective, you've made some progress, but it's so good for the adrenaline spike, for the dopamine hit actually. But you know, if you can get adrenaline out of it, good for you. Here's a quick example. Each of these pieces I work on in the back of the podcasts are from one of my stories. Before each one, I have to lay out a lot of groundwork before I can actually start working. First, I have to decide what I want to do, which location I want to draw. If I haven't really thought about it terribly, then I really need to hash out what it looks like in my mind. Then I find a slew of references for rocks, stone, ground, the foliage, any architecture present, wagons in this one, and then I make a bunch of thumbnails. I think I might have laid this one out 10 or 15 times before I actually started. It was really hard for me to settle on a composition that I was somewhat happy with. And I'm still not 100% sure that I am happy with it. But we'll kind of see, I guess, as it unfolds. Then I have to get all the supplies out, tape the paper down, measure out the camera position, sketch out basic shapes, and then, only then, do I get to start working on the actual piece you are watching come together. That list of things, though large and potentially intimidating, is easy to start working through. It doesn't take a lot of brain power for me to lay out all the pieces, for me to sit on my couch and find my references, for me to tape this down. None of that is actually like creatively stressful. 
The ability to work through the individual elements on the list helps me to avoid procrastinating, and it helps me to actually dive into the work and continue to move forward. Remember that you just have to do the work to get the results. It sounds super simple, and in a way it is. Following through is not. This is a counter to assuming you have to be in a certain headspace to work, because you don't. You can practice drawing heads, you can finish your painting, you can plan for the next piece, even if you find yourself in a less than ideal headspace. Is it going to be tough if it was a really difficult day? Of course. But I'm talking about the normal day-to-day -day here, the routines. We aren't always going to have our mood in the optimal place when we need to work. If you were in school, you know this innately. The homework needs done whether or not you feel great on this particular day. You can do that without the pressure of school, push yourself through, and accomplish the task regardless. It almost helps to go back in your brain and find that same uh, resilience that you used when you were younger if you're out of high school and force that into your current day self. For some people, this is easy, and for others, it is very, very hard. So know yourself and don't overextend yourself too much. A little bit of overextending might be good, though. Here's a quick one. Eliminate distractions in your work area. Wherever it is that you sit down to work, and if you don't have a specific predefined area to work, then I, I, I get one, please. I talked about this a whole bunch in a lot of my other podcasts and videos, but having a predefined area to work in is one of the best things you can do for your just mental well-being artistically. Um, it doesn't have to be much. It can be a corner with a sketchbook where your sketchbook is just always there. I have taken over my dining room table many, many, many times, but I, I digress. Make sure that your work area, whatever it is, is devoid of as many distractions as possible. I would recommend if you play video games, don't have your video game console, whatever it is that you use, in the same area that you work on your artwork. It's too easy to be distracted. If you watch videos while you're working on your artwork, I would probably not let yourself start watching something until you're already prepped and you're working on your art. How many times have we sat down with the intention of watching something while we drew, and then we just watched something for half an hour? So combat those kinds of things by eliminating distractions. I also want to say that my studio is super, super cluttered. To me, a lot of the things that clutter my studio are not distractions. I have old toys from my childhood, I have pictures of my kid, I have paintings, I have drawings, I have posters, I have sculpture, I have plants, I've got two fig trees in here. I've got all kinds of random stuff that could be distracting and probably would be distracting for a lot of people. For me, it's this menagerie of the right amount of clutter, so it makes me feel less stressed about accidentally recluttering the room. It, it just doesn't halt anything for me. They're not distractions. They make it feel like a homey space. It's a comfortable space for me, but that's me. You have to know where your threshold is. These things don't keep me from working. I don't sit down and like stare at my fig tree for five minutes instead of working on editing or drawing. So know yourself and make sure that you are taking measures to make sure that what would distract you is not in your workspace. Make sure things are set up prior to sitting down to work. This isn't going to be a luxury that you always have the ability to do, but if you need to do any manner of research or work or get supplies out for your project, try to get that done earlier on in the day. Let's just say, for example, that you tend to work as a night owl. You start working on your artwork at 10 o'clock at night. Maybe everyone else in the house has gone to bed by then. Throughout the day, when you have a couple minutes, get things set up. If you are an oil painter, this could mean getting your palette ready, getting the sketch done on your canvas, just having things in a, in a ready position to start. For me right now, as I'm working through all the Inktober stuff, it means getting my sketches done when I have five to 10 minutes in between uh, hanging out with my daughter or doing dishes. It means finding the photos when I have a couple of free minutes. It means making sure that my camera and my lights are set up correctly, that my workspace only requires maybe a minute to two minutes before I can actually sit down and get something done. This isn't something you always have the ability to do, but whenever you do, when you finish a drawing, when you finish a session, clean up what is necessary, but honestly, if leaving out your ink is going to make getting back into your ink later a little bit easier, do it. Try warming up before you dive in. This is something that I struggle with. I'm not good with this, but it's really beneficial. I did this uh, for pretty much the entire time that I taught. We would have warm ups two days a week. It's just, a, it's a good thing. And if you are struggling to get into your artwork or you jump into your artwork and you feel like you're just not firing on all cylinders, 
sit down and draw something low stress for a little while before you actually get started. It doesn't really matter what this is, just something that is low stress for you, something that is easy for you to wrap your head around, something that is gonna be fun, and it's gonna get you in the right headspace. Maybe when you start drawing, your heart rate is a little elevated because you have higher expectations for your work and for what you're doing. And if you give yourself five minutes, 10 minutes of low stress drawing that is satisfactory, that is fun, you know, maybe it's even just drawing, you know, your name or writing letters or just drawing circles. Sometimes when I don't know what to do, I'll just sit and draw a whole bunch of boxes, practice my perspective, but it's, it's low stress. It's easy. You know, if I mess up one, I'm going to do 30 or 40. So who cares? But sometimes warming up can be a wonderful thing because it doesn't come with all of the same expectations. And often our expectations are what gut us and make it really easy to, to procrastinate. It's the stress or it's the expectations. Warming up doesn't have much in the way of expectations. If your warm ups turn out crappy, whatever. You're gonna do dozens of them, it doesn't matter. So try doing warm ups before you dive in. Consider rewarding yourself when you avoid procrastination. Celebrate. Find people in your life you can share with, people who won't judge you and who will just cheer for you. I heard something funny just today. I was listening to Brandon Sanderson, who's a pretty prolific fantasy author, and he was talking about when he hit, when he was early on in his career, he would allow himself to open up a pack of magic cards if he hit certain thresholds in his work. I think this is hilarious, but it is kind of like a giving yourself a reward for avoiding procrastination. So maybe if you're hungry for a snack, you wait until you've hit a certain amount of time in your, in your piece. Um, don't refrain from eating, but if you're going to give yourself a snack or a piece of candy or something, that might be acceptable. For me, a lot of the time what this is, is I allow myself free time. I allow myself to play video games. I allow myself to do something that is mindless once I've hit my thresholds, once I've accomplished everything I wanted to in my day with my artistic time, with my creative time, with my videos, around the house, whatever it might be. When I have accomplished my professional tasks, I am then allowed to do fun things. And so it pushes me to do the fun things. I feel rewarded for them. I don't feel guilty then when I sit down and play video games for an hour because I earned this. So reward yourself when you avoid procrastinating, when you achieve things, give yourself some manner of tangible reward. Procrastination is a tendency many of us suffer from, and it's tough to overcome. I didn't truly have a handle on it until I was almost done with college. I started getting papers done ahead of time and it felt wonderful. I felt relieved and immediately disappointed and passed me for not figuring it out sooner. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was a benefit to you and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one, y'all. See you soon.